When you think about old money dynasties in America, you might immediately picture names like the Rockefellers, the Kennedys, and the Vanderbilts. These families have left an indelible mark on our nation's history. But have you ever heard of the DuPonts? Well, you're in for a treat because today, we're diving deep into the fascinating story of the DuPont family, a lineage that arguably outshines them all in terms of wealth and influence. Chapter 1 the French Origins and the New World Our journey begins in Paris in 1739 when a young man named Pierre Samuel Dupont came into this world. He came from humble beginnings, but boy did he have ambition. You see, Paris in the mid-18th century was a place of stark contrasts, with rich aristocrats living lavishly while the poor struggled to make ends meet. Pierre Samuel's parents recognized his intellectual potential and encouraged him to pursue knowledge. From a young age, Pierre Samuel showed a thirst for knowledge, particularly in economics and philosophy. He attended the Collège de France, where he delved into the cutting-edge ideas of his time. His writings on the complex relationship between economic structures and human behavior were revolutionary and earned him not only academic acclaim, but also advisory roles within the French government. However, when the French Revolution erupted in 1789, Pierre Samuel began to doubt the direction it was taking. He was eventually imprisoned by the revolutionaries, and the situation in France turned perilous. In 1799, the Dupont family made a pivotal decision to seek refuge in the United States, a land brimming with untapped potential and a fresh start. Chapter 2 Laying the Foundations in America now, DuPont's journey to America wasn't without its share of suspicions and rumors. Some believed that Pierre Samuel sympathized with radical Jacobins back in France, but historical records suggest otherwise. He was a man of nuanced ideologies, not aligned with extreme views. Upon arriving in the early 1800s, the United States was a young nation on the brink of industrialization. Pierre Samuel wasted no time, and in just three years, founded E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company in 1802. He saw an opportunity in gunpowder manufacturing, given the nation's westward expansion and increasing geopolitical tensions. Chapter 3 – Capitalization on Gunpowder But here's the thing. The DuPonts didn't just capitalize on this moment, they revolutionized it with remarkable speed. They expanded their production capabilities to meet the skyrocketing demand for gunpowder. In the 1800s, while the American Civil War was happening, the DuPont family found themselves on the edge of a great opportunity that would change their future. The Union Army needed gunpowder urgently, and the DuPonts saw this as their chance. They got profitable contracts, becoming an important supplier in the war effort. But they didn't stop there. They quickly expanded their ability to make more gunpowder to meet the growing demand. By the end of the war, they had become the top gunpowder maker in the world, and their wealth went way up, making them part of America's rich and powerful people. But this rise wasn't without some problems. As the 1800s were ending, the DuPont family started to get involved in politics too. For example, in 1890, Eli DuPont married Alice Balin, the daughter of a famous Delaware politician. This made the DuPonts have a direct connection to Delaware's political groups, and Henry Algernon Dupont, another family member, served as the U.S. Minister to Italy from 1893 to 1897. These moves and important appointments were the building blocks of the Dupont family's growing power in politics. However, where there is good stuff, there are also bad things. During the Civil War, some people said that the Duponts were making a lot of money from the war. They said they charged really high prices for their gunpowder. The family said they had to do that because there was a big demand for it, and it wasn't about being greedy. But these accusations left a lasting mark and made people not trust them as much. And they wanted more information about how they did business. They went through times of making money during wars and dealing with controversies. The DuPont family became not just big in business, but also influential in politics. Chapter 4 DuPont's Wealth and Power in the 20th Century When World War I started, the DuPont family saw another chance to show they were experts in explosives and gunpowder. They joined the Allied forces and gave them important things for the war. 
like explosives. For the DuPonts, this wasn't just about money. They did things to help America and even supported war bonds and patriotic events to make people feel good. They were both helping the country and making a lot of money. And everyone could see it. During the Great Depression, a time when many businesses were struggling, the DuPont family showed how smart they were with money. While lots of businesses were failing, the DuPonts made a smart investment in General Motors in the 1920s. By the end of the 1920s, they owned a lot of GM. Even though GM was having a hard time because of the depression, the DuPonts didn't give up on their investment. They gave GM money and help with running the company during the worst parts of the depression. It wasn't just hoping things would get better. They thought about it carefully and made a bet that paid off. When the American economy started to get better, GM started making more money and the DuPonts investment became worth even more. But in the late 1930s and early 1940s, the DuPonts had to deal with legal problems that challenged the foundations of their business. They were accused of breaking laws about competition, especially in their gunpowder and chemical businesses. They said that they were just trying to compete in a tough market. Legal actions against DuPont started in 1941, and it was a long fight that lasted for many years. The government worked hard to take apart the DuPont company and make it into three different parts and people started wondering if the DuPont name would still be important in the modern world. Chapter 5 Continuing Power and Change In the early 1960s, the DuPont family found themselves in the middle of an environmental problem. The damage from their chemical work on the environment, like air and water pollution, that made people sick became harder to ignore. They couldn't just ignore these problems anymore. In 1962, they did something important by creating a special environmental protection group. They put a lot of money into making technology that was better for the environment. They also started telling the public about the things that they were doing to be more responsible. The DuPonts did a lot of advertising and sponsorships to show they cared about the environment. By 1981, they made a big move by buying Kono, an important energy company. This helped them make more money and become bigger in the energy business. Today, the DuPont family is still a symbol of power in many areas, like business, helping others, and making rules. But in the early 2000s, people started looking more closely at the health problems that might come from Teflon, a special coating used on cooking pans that the DuPont family was known for. Scientists found that Teflon might be connected to some health problems, and this made people wonder about the family's legacy. At first, the DuPonts didn't want to admit that Teflon might be a problem. But in 2005, they said they would pay $16.5 million to people who got sick from Teflon and would change how they make Teflon to be safer. These problems made people not trust them as much and hurt Teflon sales, but the DuPont family's power is still strong. Their ability to get through challenges, whether they are about the environment, money, or what's right, shows that they are one of the most important old money families in America. Their story is a good example that even when things are tough, if you don't give up and use your cleverness, you can still stay important and have a lot of power. That'll be it for today's video, but if you are an old money enthusiast like us, don't forget to check our latest video on Ariana Rockefeller who is an iconic old money princess.